not criticize. The details around the sword swallowing Jezebel calling out stronger men's conference of James River Church keep getting more confusing. There's been developments, there's been responses, there's been details emerging, there's been apologies, there's been confrontations, and there's even been shots fired at anyone who's slightly critical of the situation. We're going to examine if this is something that is accurate and something that we should consider or if not. There's a whole lot we have to cover here, okay? There is the performer who responded to Mark Driscoll. There is Jane Rivers Church video recap of the entire conference. There is something that I said that may be misconstrued from my previous video that I have to correct. We're going to get into all that, but before we go there, guys, my name is Ruslan. This channel exists to encourage, empower, and inspire you to live a life that blesses God. If you're new here, if you're not new here, please make sure to hit that subscribe button, as many of you who watch this channel, unfortunately, are not subscribed. All right, let's jump into this video. The first thing we got to look at is the recap of this event. All right. Fireworks. I like it. The little jump worship thing you like? Yeah, the little jumpy jump worship thing. Mm -hmm. All right. Good, cool. Cam okay. So oh. there was a boxing match. Okay. The, that's pretty fire. That there was a there was a boxing. Professional boxing match? Professional boxing match. That's that's hard. If you're doing something shirtless, that's the way to do it. All right. There's uh, fisheye cameras, of course. You got the monster, monster trucks. trucks. Come on, dude. More boxing. More boxing. Something being kicked from the stage. This is in, a, in an arena mm -hmm. in the Ozarks, which if you've ever watched the show, you Ooh. would know that this actually makes a lot of sense now that you realize it's the Ozark. <laughs> okay. Preaching, yelling, uh, music, more music. More boxing. Praise, praise, praise. All right. So uh, this is a pretty, pretty, pretty fire recap video. I'm not going to lie. Shout out to the editing team that put this together. Yep. So they just announced 2025 Stronger Men's Conference. And if you hit register today, uh, you will see that they have tickets on sale now, early bird tickets, which by the way, these are very reasonable prices. Yeah. 119 bucks. Okay, so two days, one night. This is a reasonable price. So I'm not going to be, oh, these people are bad for. No, no, no. This, 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 these are reasonable prices for a men's conference for two days. Tickets are going to go up to 200 bucks, I think, uh, uh, when it's all said and done. They have group discount tickets. This is all This is all fine. Just just put a pin in that. Just put a pin in that at a 120 to $200 price point. Put a pin in that because we're going to come back to the idea. What you'd notice that wasn't in this trailer is anything with the sword swallowing act and obviously anything with Mark Driscoll in it. Mm. Okay, so those two things were left out, and we're going to look at the response, the response from the performer. Let's go to that first, and then the 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 the, the ridiculous the ridiculous things that were said during the, the talk with Mark Driscoll afterwards. That is, is by far arguably one of the cringiest things I've ever heard a pastor say. So let's look at the response from the performer. So Christian event showman hits out at pastor over strip show remarks. Okay, so this is his response to this entire thing. This is the performer, all right? Man who performed a sword-swallowing act at a Christian men's conference has hit out at the pastor who criticized this act. Pastor Mark Driscoll was kicked off stage after he criticized Alex Magala's performance during the opening of the Stronger Man's Conference held this year at the Great Southern Bank Arena in Springfield, Missouri. So the performer, which we went over in the previous video, go watch the previous video, the performer, America's Got Talent, I think he bears the least amount of responsibility here. This dude was just here to do, do, do what he was paid to do. He was here to do his normal act, right? During his performance at the conference, Magala took off his shirt, climbed a pole on stage, and swallowed a sword. Pause. Driscoll later criticized the act, likening it to something one might see in a strip club. However, Driscoll's remarks failed to recognize the difference between a male striptease and a stunt performance rooted in art and sport. Magala told Nosewick, only an uninformed person would draw a comparison between my act and inappropriate performance. Okay, so he's clapping back. He said the act is deeply rooted in a historical and cultural tradition that dates back over 1,200 years and has since become a respected discipline, uh, showcasing human strength and agility. As a Christian, Magala said he seeks to use his talent to inspire and entertain audiences in a way that respects my faith. The performance was designed to be a celebration of physical human achievements and is aligned with James River Church's purpose in bringing others to the light of God. He added, it's essential to approach such performances with an understanding of their intention rather than reducing them to mere entertainment.
With the light? That's pretty fire. That's- I believe this dude was a male performer, male adult performer, a decade ago. That's not what he currently does. I believe this dude was just there to do his job. Mm-hmm. He was asked to perform. He did his job. I believe that he is in a local church now. He's going to church, as far as I know. Uh, he's plugged into a church. He's a Christian. All these different things. I think the brunt of this, unfortunately, falls on the people that organized this event. Okay, and I and I'm gonna have to correct something I said here in a moment. Uh, so just just bear with me. We'll get there. So I think this falls on the people who organized the event and missing the mark on having a shirtless man swallowing swords and doing calisthenic exercises at a, at a, at a men's event. With a pole and just a parallel, it, 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 it seems sus. It doesn't mean that he it, he is sus. It, it just seems off. And so I think there's a time and a place to call that out. However, we're gonna get to Driscoll's potential alleged issues here in a moment. But let's first look at the way the pastor of this. Remember, I told you guys my issues f- here is with the pastor and the head of this operation. And I've seen him do this before. I've seen him repeatedly use this way of thinking and the way he maneuvers. Most specifically, when Physics of Heaven by Bethel was exposed as clearly a nonsensical New Age book. He then got very defensive of Bill Johnson because he had Bill Johnson booked, Bill Johnson's the pastor of Bethel, to come speak. And people were rightfully so calling out the heresy in that book. Bethel quietly pulled it off their website. He stood by his mans and doubled down and kind of spoke about people in a very demeaning way in in terms of people who are critical of it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then Bill Johnson came and there was the alleged toe growing back miracle, which he claimed that there was going to be proof for, said he had the proof. And then when people called him on it and uh, showthetoes.com was put up, all of a sudden they didn't want to put the proof up and they didn't want to show that anymore. As the ladies prayed for Chrissy over the next 30 minutes, all three toes grew within an hour and nails began to grow on all the toes. But they saw the bone come, wrap in flesh completely grow out and by morning the toenails everything had formed she got three brand new toes what i want to assure you of is it's real it's real it's real it's real it's real we can provide the kind of proof that would be necessary people have asked have you seen pictures of the toes i have so i've seen the picture a few moments later people are saying well if it's genuine why aren't you why aren't you doing anything with it to publicize it i'm less interested in proving to people what i know god did than i am in protecting sheep who are vulnerable so he's already been kind of talking out of both sides of his neck what he says here in my opinion this sort of thinking as a charismatic i think this makes everyone who's a charismatic look bad this sort of thinking and the positioning and the framing of saying this sort of stuff is just not a good look Not only is it not a good look, it sounds like spiritual gaslighting. People saw, they agreed with Driscoll. I don't know about the whole Jezebel spirit thing, but let's look at uh, what exactly was said in in the talk. This didn't come out, and 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 I'm curious why they haven't put this out, but let's look at what he said after Driscoll did it. They brought him out. Driscoll apologized, and now listen to the conversation. This is from the 30-minute conversation where they were both out there, which, again, is a whole other conversation of should Driscoll apologize, should he not Driscoll apologize, Matthew 18, not Matthew 18. I think sometimes public sin needs public correction, though if you're backstage with your guy who you've known for years who stood by you and you don't pull him to the side and, and, and share some of your concerns and say, hey, if I can't share these concerns from the stage, I'm not going to participate in the conference. Perhaps that's how it should have been handled if that's your friend. That's neither here nor there. Let's look at him doubling down on the foolishness. Go ahead and play this. Not agree with either one of us. But here's the thing you have to be careful that you do not criticize people who have the anointing of God on their life. You do not criticize people who have the anointing of God on their life. This is the same bizarre honor culture that says things like, touch not the Lord's anointed. All one has to do is pull up that passage and see that touch not the Lord anointed is about David not deleting Saul when he had the opportunity to. This isn't about, hey man, Bethel does some weird stuff with grave soaking and students in their university are grave soaking and they're trying to get the anointing from people that have passed on hundreds of years ago. I don't know about that. That seems like a cultural disrupt. Hey, Bill Johnson once upon a time said that Jesus preached the gospel of healing and, and, and then Paul said if anyone comes back and preaches a different gospel, we'll then cast him aside and, 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 and that's not the real gospel. And then later on, Paul comes out and says, hey, I have a thorn in my flesh. So according to Paul's own standard, he was preaching a false gospel. This is what, these, these are Bill Johnson's words. I refuse to create a theology that allows for sickness. The apostle Paul gives a warning in Galatians and he says this. He says, if I 
or even an angel comes to you and preaches to you a different gospel, you're going to reject it. That's amazing. An angel shows up <laughs> and he brings you a different standard, a different gospel. Reject it. He says, even if I come back to you and I change my mind, don't pay any attention to me. All right. What gospel is it? It's the gospel of Jesus. It's the gospel of the kingdom. Paul refers to his thorn in the flesh, which has been interpreted by many as disease allowed or brought on by God. That's a different gospel. Jesus didn't model it and he didn't teach it. You, you have clearly things that are towing the line of utter heresy. Paul preached a different gospel because he didn't preach 100% healing all the time. Right on the right on the line. And by the way, I'm not saying Jesus did uh, uh, Paul and, and God doesn't heal. God absolutely heals. I'm a charismatic. But if these aren't red flags, if these aren't things to be concerned about, I, I mean, then 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 then, then, then what, 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 what 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 are we to look out for in terms of being careful of false teaching? What does that even mean? Do those verses even mean anything? If you can make statements like that, if you could talk about. I have the proof that toes grew back with bone and then skin and nails. And then you say, well, we don't, we don't want to show it because we want to protect people. What, what are we even talking about? And then listen to what he says will happen if you criticize people who have the anointing of God on their life. Here's the thing. You have to be careful that you do not criticize people who have the anointing of God on their life. Better, better to say nothing. Because what happens is once you begin to criticize somebody who has the anointing on them, you're in the flesh. And once you're in the, you're flesh. In the flesh, then you're moving toward unbelief. And once you move toward unbelief, then you live a barren life spiritually. And that's the danger. You see, you could go out of here not knowing Mark and I personally. You could go out of here chattering. And what happens is it poisons your spirit and it leads you to a place of unbelief. So if I'm following correctly, if we criticize people who have the anointing of God on their life, regardless on how many red flags we see, mm -hmm. we aren't being good Bereans. We aren't having a disagreement like we've seen brothers in the faith have in the scriptures. We are now in the flesh, regardless on how ch charitable we're being, regardless on how fair we're attempting to be, we're now in the flesh, and that will lead us to unbelief, and then we will live a barren life. That's 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 the quote. I'm not, I, I think we all heard that correctly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh yeah. It'll poison your spirit. It'll poison your spirit. I, I'm just gonna let you guys sort that out on your own. I have no I have no comments. I have nothing to say about that. I think that statement is another red flag in a plethora of red flags around folks who are a part of this movement. And that's definitely not a good look to be a Mark Driscoll with a Mark Driscoll past sitting next to a guy that's saying those things. It's like, oh, I wonder what he was thinking. You know, if if we're going to uh, steal man and give him the benefit of the doubt, say he's come a long way since his old situation, definitely don't want to be up there with a, a, uh, another pastor that believes that. I, sometimes pastors get it wrong. Sometimes pastors fall. Sometimes pastors uh, uh, get, get in the flesh. So mm. We're all liable of doing that, capable of doing that. I think that criticism, constructive criticism, criticism of people who mean well, criticism that aren't, like we're not talking about people that are not on your team. Right? Like, like we believe in the gifts. We believe in the spirit. We believe that God can heal. We believe that God can do these things. These things should should lead, in my opinion, if we had more of this humble, hey man, sometimes we get stuff wrong. I said that and 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 that fell flat. And I shouldn't have said that. Guys, my bad. Hey, we said this lady's toes grow but grew back. I think we got it wrong. Right? Just 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 be honest. Right? Just be honest. Now, here's what I will say. And perhaps. And I said this to you offline. Perhaps I got something wrong about this event. Mm -hmm. perhaps, I, perhaps I was wrong about this event. Let me explain. In my previous video, I said the response to, to Driscoll being told to go off stage and people booing the pastor was indicative of a, of, of a rising up of young men and men in general who don't need as much entertainment mm -hmm. at these sorts of events. They don't need to be entertained. They don't need the monster truck. They don't need all this other stuff. That's, 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 that's what I said. And I believe that. And I believe men need to be called to more, not less. I believe men need to be challenged, not just in spiritual matters. I'm not saying just preach the gospel at them all the time. I'm saying men need to be challenged to rise to the occasion and not be coddled. That's what I said. It was brought to my attention by an acquaintance of mine who said that this is an outreach event. Hmm. He was there with his kids. His kids loved the monster trucks. His kids loved all the other stuff. We saw that video. That was a fire, that was a fire thing. Yeah. And so perhaps where I'm wrong is 
This was an outreach, and this wasn't a men's conference. And it was uh, it was th- two days of full entertainment. Two days of entertainment as an outreach to get people in, and we've we've done stuff like this at our church. We've had uh, uh, our blessed local events where we've had skateboarders come out and BMX bikes come out and feed the community and give away stuff and 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 bands and music and entertainment, and then there'll be a little bit of a uh, gospel presentation towards the end. Mm-hmm. You meet people's physical needs. You 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 lower the on ramp so that those far from God can step into an environment that's not so intimidating. And to be clear, I have no problem with that. I don't think there's anything wrong with entertainment. I don't think there's anything wrong with monster trucks. I don't think there's anything wrong with boxing matches. I don't think there's anything wrong with any of that stuff. But perhaps it's not me, but this is a messaging problem. Because when you're doing a stronger men's conference at a $120 price point, which, which is a very reasonable price point for any conference, by the way. Yep. Our conference would be more than this, by the way, just so you know. Because uh, this is not about a money, money bad, charging for stuff bad. I'm not saying that at all. But perhaps the messaging of this is what's confusing. Because from the outside, this appears like we're getting men together and equipping them to be stronger men. Yeah. But then there's all this entertainment and, and fireworks and all that kind of stuff. If we're doing a stronger men's conference, I would think that we would be about building stronger men and not just trying to entertain them, right? And if this is an outreach event, well, perhaps this messaging is is, is a little, little yeah. off. Yeah, I don't know if people that aren't walking with the Lord go to a, a men's conference, a stronger men's conference. Like, that is a very church language. Like, um, I don't know of any non-believers or new believers who are spending $120 or $200 to go to an outreach event. I don't know of any. Now, to be fair, this is in Ozark, and Ozark is a weird place. It's different. Yep. Shout out. To, I, I love that TV show. Some of you guys are going to have a problem with that. I have friends in the area. Perhaps this is common. Perhaps people there, because there's, I don't know, they, they, they're, they're, they're accustomed to paying to go to these sorts of like outreach events. Hmm. Maybe the, the the way I grew up is I didn't know that people paid to go to outreach events. Because every outreach event around here, by the way, it's Harvest fun. Festival, Miles Ahead Crusade, those are all free. They're yeah. all in stadiums and they're all big and there's music and there's lights and there's fireworks, but they're all free. So perhaps I just, maybe I just don't know of any non-Christians that pay hundreds of dollars to go to outreach events, right? And I'm not trying to be facetious. I'm literally saying maybe there's a disconnect. So I don't know if I have the steel man. I think there's a messaging problem here. I think overall there's a, there's a messaging problem. There's an issue with the messaging of what they're saying they're doing and the way it looks with versus what's being presented. And then when someone's being critical of it and saying, hey, this just doesn't seem like it aligns correctly. And now you have people, this dude who is on America's Got Talent catching strays. Yeah, poor guy. It just seems like it's a, it's a little, it's something's off here. So, so, so some can we all agree there's at least some yellow flags, if not f- overtly red flags? It should be called like man time or like man, men's, men's weekend. Men's weekend. Like, hey, we got muscle trucks. We got boxing. Yeah. We got sword swallowing. Men's weekend. Calisthenics. Folks, you know. They we got, got the, male pole dancing. I mean, calisthenics. They, this, by the way, this could have worked if they just did pull-up bars and had the dudes do the crazy calisthenics. I was calisthenics. thinking that too. That or or, or like the swings. Have them jump from swing yeah. to swing. That would have been crazy. Fine. That would have been fine. You see, according to the Bible, that prayer is extremely important in terms of us being transformed from the inside out when we get aligned with God's will. For the Christians watching this channel, I want you guys to implement these spiritual disciplines in your day-to-day life. And the only way I've been able to do this consistently is through writing down my prayers in a prayer journal that does a few things. One, it allows me to reflect and come to God humbly and ask Him to move on my behalf. And two, it allows me to document my prayers, which ultimately help me remember the very things that I was praying for and see the hand of God tangibly in my life when He answers them. So I would urge you, consider writing down your prayers. It could be in a blank notebook. It could even be on your phone. Or you could check out the one I personally designed and used for my own quiet time and spiritual discipline that I think will be a huge blessing. It's the exact structure and system that I've used for years to pray and be more consistent in my spiritual disciplines. You can pick yours up today by clicking the link in the pinned comment below. All right, I'll see you over there. Peace.